Welcome back. <laughs> if you've clicked on this video, it's because you are a part of a very niche demographic of people that are trying to learn how to make a chainmail shirt, also known as a hopper. I don't care if you call it a chainmail shirt or a hauberk, I'm not gatekeeping any terminology here. So this is in essence what we're making today. Um, when I first started doing chainmail, this is actually the first piece that I ever made. And I had no idea what I was doing. And it was so hard to find any tutorials or patterns or references. I really just had to like look up historically accurate chainmail and try to recreate it. And it was so difficult and there was a lot of trial and error on this. So I feel like now I can hopefully pass along my knowledge. Um, this is one of the most frequently asked questions I get on my chainmail tutorial journey is how to just do like the basic construction of a chainmail shirt. So hopefully this tutorial can help you. And yeah, I'll just get into sort of showing you the general construction of it. I'm, I'm not gonna remake one. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use um, this one that I've already made as a reference. I did make this out of aluminum, but it's still with the length that goes down pretty far. I think the last time I weighed it, it was about 15 pounds. So it's still quite heavy, even though it's made out of aluminum rings. The size is 16 gauge, 5 16 inch rings. And I think when I calculated how many I needed, I think it was like 20,000 rings to make this. So there's your baseline <laughs> of knowledge that you need if you want to make, you know, and that's all dependent on sleeve length and how far down you want it to go. Choose your own adventure. Something that I think is very important to be aware of when you're making a chainmail shirt is the direction in which your foreign ones are laying. So this is just one foreign one that I've pulled out. Um, and you can see that like if we're looking at a flat piece, this would be it laying horizontal, but it can also be laid vertical where it has like a little bit more length in the way that it's laying. So let me put it into practical use. If we're looking at my shirt here, you'll see that all of this is falling long ways. So the foreign ones are all sort of laying in this vertical direction. And it'll look a little bit different on the sleeves. So when you look at the sleeves, it looks like they're laying the horizontal way. But that's because when you're making this full shirt, it's all running in one direction. If you're looking at it like it's a giant square that's just missing this little 90 degree corner, when you pull the sleeve out, it's still laying long ways. So here's a different angle. You can see on the sleeve, it's sort of laying this very open pattern, but when you pull it, it's all falling in that vertical direction so that all the way down, it's falling vertically. You don't have any rings that are, like none of it is going opposite of each other. It's all one big sheet that's falling vertically. When I started construction on mine, I started with the whole torso bit of it. Um, I do have, mine goes down farther and I have this split so it covers sort of like tacits on the legs, but you could stop it anywhere you wanted it. At first it was like kind of normal shirt length. So I started with the whole torso section of it. And for that, me, that meant from under the armpit down to where I wanted it to stop. So it was like this whole big section. The most important part about doing this midsection is making sure that it's wide enough, like when it's a tube, when you fully connect it, that it's wide enough that you can get your shoulders through it. Cause that's, that needs to be the widest part of the piece. So yeah, this is just one big giant rectangle essentially. So when it was all flat, it was huge. It looked way too long. And then you bring that around and you'll just kind of seam up the sides. And since it's all going the same direction, it will just feel like you're adding on another row of foreign ones. It'll, it will connect seamlessly. So you're making this big giant rectangle for your midsection. So after that was done and I made sure that it was wide enough for my shoulders, the next step that I did was attached essentially just like a spaghetti strap or like I did just sort of like a rectangular strap that connected the front and the back all the way down to the armpits. So I had like <laughs> a piece, well, I guess, yeah, it went over my chest. Um, so it was a big rectangle. And then I just had like a spaghetti strap tank top that went. And again, all of your rings are going the same direction. So this should be a very seamless connecting to get it all on. Once I had my straps on, that was when I started on the sleeves. And again, these are just big rectangles. <laughs> Big long rectangle 
Obviously you can keep test fitting it to make sure that it fits around your arm a little loosely. You're always gonna be wearing a shirt or something underneath it. Um, mine goes down to about like a little bit below my elbow, um, but you can make it as long as long or short as you want. If you wanna have like a little short sleeve moment, if you want it to go all the way down to your wrist, that's up to you. And again, they're all going the same direction. So you can just continue from your little rectangular spaghetti strap sleeve, and then you just attach your sleeve onto it both ways. The last part, um, I mean, after you've done all this, like anything more than that is gonna be easy peasy. <laughs> so there was a little bit that I needed to build up in the back because it ended here. So this is the underarm part. So I just um, worked up to a point that I was happy with, connected it all here. And then for the front, I just did like a, obviously a V-neck pattern. So if my strap was like to here, I just did these little middle fill sections. If you are trying to do this V-neck line and you're finding that it's too difficult to figure out, you can also just do a very basic um, square neckline and that's totally acceptable as well. And then I did later go back and add the extended bits, um, but that's totally optional. Again, I was going for like Eowyn's Dernhelm armor, um, which is why I extended mine, but it did add a lot of work. There is a bit of a hot debate not that hot, <laughs> but about um, whether you connect the underside of the armpit. This is like one of those tricky areas because of the way all of this chain mail is falling in that vertical direction. The way that this wrap, the, the way the sleeve wraps around, if you hold it up like this, this part is falling like the horizontal direction. So these don't meet up seamlessly. You can't just like continue on. You can on the top, but it, you'll hit a point where they're not running in the same direction anymore. I looked it up and it is historically accurate um, in some cases to leave this little underside open. Not only does this greatly increase uh, mobility in your arms, uh, but it also it's like a nice little breathing pocket. And um, anything that I was seeing that they did connect it, it's very, it gets very bulky trying to connect those two different um, directions that the rings are running. So I think it's totally acceptable to leave this area open, especially because you're not actually weak at the armpits, you're not getting shot by arrows. So like, it's okay, you can, <laughs> you can leave the armpit open. Here's a better look at that, um, that junction. So you can see all of these rings are falling vertically the foreign ones, the underside of the sleeves are falling in this open direction. So they just don't, there isn't um, really a good way to connect these without it being very bulky. So you can just leave those open. Give yourself, give your arms a little bit of movement. video made sense. I think the directionality of the rings is really the most important part to grasp. And then otherwise you're just making big triangles, wrapping them together to make tubes. It's, it's simple in concept, but maybe because I've just because I've made it. So uh, hopefully this makes sense. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I will try my best to answer them in the comments below. And yeah, if you find yourself making a hauberk, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. And thank you for watching.